Hey there, this is Dan. You're watching this all DC. And today I'm going to talk about tracking the Warcry metagame, tracking Warcry events, uh, even if you don't care about the metagame, and why that's useful and interesting. Um, I really want to start being able to look at how different factions are doing, what sorts of lists people are playing. And I recently started uh, going through BCP and compiling all that into a sheet that I'm going to show you into in a second. Let me show you what exactly I'm tracking because I'd like to be able to say interesting things about what's going on in the Warcry meta that isn't just uh, my impressions from looking at the stats, testing, and then talking with other people who test. So the first thing I want to show you is what I'm tracking. And I'm going to track a lot fewer things than you'll see in the 40k universe, in uh, Warhammer AOS, in certainly, if you've ever been to MTG Top 8, the amount of stuff they are able to track. I may be tracking a lot less than that just because I'm just one person. And Warcry is a pretty casual game, so we can do just kind of only the basics. First, I'm going to have the tournament, the tournament name the player name. The only reason I'm bringing player name, I've hidden it right now, but I want to be able to say who were the best players of season one. And I'll be able to do that by just tracking the names and, um, and you know, personal win rates, essentially. And then I've got a faction here, games played, uh, wins, losses, draws, and then tags based on uh, if we know anything about the list, what type of list it was. Did it have a monster? Was the monster a chimera? Was it a soup list? Were they using a bespoke warband? I'm going to be adding swarm and elite here as well once I sort of decide how I want to do that. Then I'll just have the date here in case I end up wanting to use that for something. And I would love it if people would send me their information that they've got here. If you check out these two Norcry tournaments, uh, they were not run in BCP, but the tournament organizer was kind enough to send me uh, just the list of what went down at those tournaments. And the reason for all of this is I really want to start being able to say interesting things about what's going on in the Warcry metagame. So let me just give you a preview of what that could be, right? If we look here, you can see all of the factions that have more than 20 games played. And most of these are kind of interesting, but not enough to say anything actually valid about them. So, for example, I've got the Chi Squared here. If you look at, say, the Age of Sigmar or the Warhammer 40k win rate tables, they give you the percentage win rate and then a plus or minus such and such percent. I think that for low sample sizes, that's pretty irresponsible. When I see something that's, say, 56% win rate, plus or minus 5%, and someone's arguing that this is a troublingly high win rate, no, that's not, that's not how those confidence intervals work. You can't really make that argument very easily. Um, so if you're going to argue it, you know, it has to be a very small supporting factor that's then based on actual gameplay theory where you say what it is about that, you know, faction that's too powerful, something like that. But we don't really have the, <laughs> we don't have the sample sizes here to even give something as precise as plus or minus 5%. These would be plus or minus, you know, 10% pretty often. So I'm going to use the chi-squared function, which will only really tell you if something is out of bounds. For example, it won't, if you've got something that says is reporting at a 50% win rate, it won't tell you 50% could be 55, could be 54, could be 46 something like that. It'll just tell you how likely is it that you can reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis essentially in this case would be that this is a, just an average warband. So this really only tells you for things that are out of bounds, whether we can scientifically say that they're out of bounds or not. And I want to give a couple examples here. So the first is Soulblight Gravelords. We can Anything with a chi-squared of more than four or so, with the number of degrees of freedom we have, uh, which are in win rates is just one degree of freedom, anything where this number is more than four or so, we can pretty reliably say that a 50-50 warband could not produce these results. I think you're down to like a 1%, 2% chance, 
something like that. And so soul-blight grave lords, we can definitively say, are significantly more powerful than just 50-50. So the true win rate might be 55, it might be 75. We don't have nearly enough sample to actually say so, but we can say that the true win rate is not 50-50, that soul-blight grave lords are legitimately better than an average warband. The same is true of Darko Savagers, where we have a very high chi-squared here. We can legitimately say that Darko Savagers are not good. <laughs> now, whether they actually deserve that 29% win rate is more questionable, right? We, we can't say Darko Savagers are sitting at a 29% win rate, and that is definitely accurate, because we only have 26 games. However, we can say with... Um, very high statistical significance that an average warband, a regular 50-50 middle of the pack warband would not have achieved those results over the course of 26 games. I would like to be able to double this list of factions that have more than 20. And once I do, I'm really excited to present to you a bigger findings. Bingo for magic references again, but there's a professional magic player who said that uh, competitive magic is the art of generalizing off of uh, sample sizes that are too small to scientifically do so. And that's going to be true no matter what. I understand that we're never going to get our sample sizes big enough that we can really say anything truly definitive about every single faction in the game. But if we can double the number of factions that have more than 20 games played, we can start to really look at you know what we're actually dealing with here. And that would be really exciting. Uh, we've got some hope that that will be possible soon. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do this by uh, the beginning of February. We have some pretty good sized tournaments happening in just the next few weeks. Uh, next weekend, if you're in, I think this is in Spain, there's going to be a tournament. There's also going to be a store championship in Connecticut. So if you're in the southern uh, southern New England area, I really strongly suggest that you check that out. Utah has been one of the hotbeds of Warcry in second edition, and they're going to be having another tournament in January 28th. They've already got eight people signed up, it looks like, out of a possible 24, so hopefully that will be cool. They've had tournaments in the high teens, low 20s pretty consistently, which is awesome. A lot of my numbers are actually based on these tournaments. And then we've got uh, these Dayton Warcry Club uh, folks, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I hope that you have. They've got an excellent podcast. But uh, they're going to be having their store championship at the 29th of January. I also am going to be having a tournament in the 21st of January. And so we're going to have a lot of data that I can track from just those tournaments, and that's going to help quite a bit. But I know for a fact that we're, we've only got about half of the tournaments that have been held for Warcry in this database because most tournaments not on BCP. So if you have data on a tournament that's not on BCP that I don't have here, I would really appreciate finding out um, because even small tournaments really, really help. And even if it's not in Swiss pairings, that's still really helpful because we're just trying to get a sense of who's playing against who with what factions, things like that, so that we can start saying things about, you know, which are the most popular factions, which are, which are winning. And also, if you've got lists shown, I'd love to be able to, you know, put some tags on them to do analysis because we've got some really interesting starts to analysis here. I've been tracking monsters, but so far only over 53 competitive games. And that's not really enough. Um, the chi-squared is pretty clear that monsters are pretty darn good. Uh, but it's not clear that non-chimera monsters are good, for example. 3.44 is sort of creeping up towards where I can maybe say something about them, but we really need more sample size on non-chimera monsters. The reason the chi-squared is so much uh, higher despite fewer games for chimeras is that 75% win rate is just very, very high. Um, so we can say that chimeras are 
uh, better than average. <laughs> uh, scientifically, we can say that. Uh, I think nobody really needed tournament data to tell them that, but um, we can at least back it up in case anyone tries to tell you that you're crazy for thinking chimeras are too good. We can legitimately say that they are too good, but there's other more interesting things. Like, for example, a lot of folks around the web will tell you that bespoke warbands are unplayable. And so far I've got 83 games of bespoke warbands in action, and they've got a actually reasonable win rate of uh, almost 46%. Now, that's obviously lower than 50, but there's a pretty good chance that a 50-50 warband could produce those numbers, and also 46% really isn't bad. If you love your out-of-the-box bespoke warband, that's reasonable. Now, if we had sort of an army of people to actually look at all these lists, we could make a separate distinction between one box bespoke warbands and multiple box bespoke warbands or bespoke plus an ally warbands. I would venture a guess that one box warbands are being annihilated out there and that one box plus an ally or two box warbands are doing pretty well. But I can't say that for sure right now. I don't have the resources to uh, check every single bespoke warband and sort of dig really, really deep to figure out if this is exactly what you would get out of one box. Um, but that kind of gives you a sense of what I'm tracking and what I'd like to be able to track. Um, I'd love to be able to say more, and I'd also love to learn um, some, of these, some of these results. For example, I really think Seraphon are a middle of the road, very, very medium faction right now, but they're doing really well, sitting at a 59% win rate. Now, the Chi Squared isn't isn't convinced. Um, we've got less than one here. So that 59% win rate could easily be a mirage. 28 games off of, um, you know, such an even win rate like that isn't really enough to tell you very much. But I'm interested to find out more. And that kind of gives you a sense of what else we could potentially see, right? Daughters of Cain are another one where this is turning into one of the more popular factions in this edition, it looks like. And they're kind of struggling, it seems like, but we can't say that for sure until we see a few more people try out their dock lists. If we get double these numbers here of, of uh, competitive Daughters of Cain games and they've still got this 41% win rate, then we can legitimately say, hey, Daughters of Cain are in some trouble here and they need some help. But right now we can't really uh, say that for sure. Um, I would theorize to say that Yes, they do need some help, but I've also said in the past, I think their heroes are good. I think Sisters of Slaughter are still playable. Um, most of the lists I see are using Witch Elves, which I don't think are very good, and that might be why, but lots of interesting stuff to, to look at. There's also factions here where if we select all and I show you, say, Ogre Maw Tribes, Ogre Maw Tribes are at... 18 competitive games played and a really awful win rate, win rate of 38%. But a lot of those games are from the first month or so of Warcry, and they were pretty clearly 1.0 lists being played and doing very, very poorly. And I would bet that if I got more information, hopefully from you guys, um, with maybe more 2.0 focused Ogre Maw Tribes lists, I think their win rate would be a lot closer to that. I think they should be in the fat middle. <laughs> Based on at least what I think of them, I would guess that they're a middle of the road warband. I would not call them, you know, 38% win rate, 39%, sorry, uh, would, would rank them as one of the worst factions in the game. I do not think they're one of the worst factions in the game, but hey, we can't really say much um, with our results yet. So I'm just bringing this video up to show you what I'm doing to try and track the Warcry metagame. This is going to be a long-term project. Um, we really can't say a ton right now, but with your help, maybe we could as early as February.